We stand here today. I'll pick it up again. We stand here today outside one of the most famous tourist attractions for both those domestically and those internationally when they come to New York City. The Intrepid Space and Air Museum. So many people pass by on a daily basis, whether they're coming in and out of New York City to work, to go to the theaters that have reopened, to conduct business, whether they're coming to see family and friends, socialize. This is a heavily trafficked West Side Highway. And yet all along the way, as in every one of the five boroughs, it has been stained by graffiti. Graffiti vandals have bombed the city with graffiti. Everywhere you go, perfect example. What was a car wash is now a warehouse. I know it looks abandoned, right? You think like, wow, nothing's going on. There's a warehouse back here. There's a viable business that's taking place each and every day. Is an owner and operator of this particular property. And they are not being held culpable or responsible for the defacement of this property. And the city of New York is doing nothing whatsoever to either buff, to scrape, or to paint over this graffiti, which is a stain on the image of New York City. And again, I just choose this. This is one of thousands of locations in the city. And you had an operation that existed up until April of 2020, created by the de Blasio administration for the beautification of New York. It's an anti-graffiti program that they said had to be disbanded temporarily because there wasn't enough funding. Quality of life, zero tolerance, broken window theory has all gone to the wayside in the de Blasio administration. So back in 2021, after almost a year or more of absolutely no repair and no cleaning over of graffiti and removal of graffiti, the de Blasio administration said in June of 2021 that they were going to hire 10,000, 10,000 workers for a clean in New York. And that would involve not just sweeping and doing day-to-day -day maintenance, but covering over the graffiti, buffing over the graffiti, finding the people responsible and holding them accountable. I ask you, have you seen any difference? I don't know what the city is doing. But I can tell you what they're not doing about graffiti. A graffiti vandal, because they are not graffiti artists. Graffiti artists will hang graffiti in their house or they'll put it on the side of the building in which the landlord or owner operator has given them a license to do that. Or they'll hang it in an art gallery where oftentimes some of these graffiti vandals have become graffiti artists from the early 60s, 70s and 80s. But this is vandalism. There's no other way to describe it. It's not art. It's a crime. Again, enforce the laws as they exist. And we'll be halfway there to solving the problem. Defacement of property will earn you either, if you're a predicate offender, jail time. If you're a predicate offender, sizable fine or minimal fine if you haven't done it often, or more than likely it'll lead to a state of community service where you are now responsible for cleaning the vandalism that you've created, painting over, using power sprays, buffing off the graffiti. None of that is happening. There's no enforcement from City Hall. There's no arrest taking place at the police level. There's no prosecution at the DA's level. It's all considered minimal crimes. Well, to me, it's a crime against all of New York City, our image. When graffiti like this is left to language day in, day out, month after month, year after year, you go down to Soho, which has been bombed with graffiti. Much of it put up during the demonstrations by Black Lives Matter and Antifa. 
Still you see signs that have been put up. F the police. All cops are bastards. All cops are bitches. ACAB. It's still there from over a year and a half ago, and it hasn't been removed. Imagine if you're police officers and you're on patrol, your morale is already at an all-time low, and the city doesn't even use the powers that they have to at least remove the graffiti if they can't figure out who the vandals are. It's a specialized graffiti task force in the NYPD that used to look at the graffiti, catalog it, critique it, like an archaeologist would the hieroglyphics on monuments in Egypt. And they could tell you specifically who the graffiti vandal is, what graffiti outfit was responsible for the tags or the pieces. For instance, you had a group called CIA. It was not the Central Intelligence Agency. It was a group of graffiti vandals called Criminals in Action. That was the acronym. And there are dozens and dozens of them now. They've replicated themselves because they can see there are no consequences for their actions. Let me give you the case of somebody who was famous and infamous in New York City. It was a young man that I knew well, lived on the Upper West Side, from a very wealthy family, a very well-known family. At one time, his father was considered the most prominent director in the world. He had just finished doing the Rocky movies, Karate Kid, John Avelson, no longer with us. His son, Jonathan, 19 years old, was part of a graffiti vandal crew and just went on sprees, as many of them do. Now, where do you think they get all this paint? You think they go into a paint store and buy this paint? Come on, you gotta be street smart. They steal the paint. They break into warehouses. They walk out with crates and crates of the aerosol cans, the spray paint. And they generally start bombing at night. But in some instances, they have such chutzpah, such coulions, such brazenness, that they'll put their graffiti tags, put their graffiti pieces up in broad daylight. And again, no arrests are being made, no follow-up, no prosecution. And the DAs, almost in every single case, have determined that they are not prosecuting these cases. So how are we going to get our city back to where it needs to be? I will prioritize graffiti and its removal because each day as mayor, I will pick a piece that is up there in a prominent location like this across from the Intrepid, bring a crew and remove the graffiti from top to bottom at our city's expense. And then I will have inspectors come. And just like in the days of speakeasy say, I know you're in there. I know you're operating either a legal business or an illegal business, but you better inform the owner operator of this property that they got 30 days or will be taking actions against you and the owner operator for your failure to remove this graffiti. Once the city removes the graffiti, the bill will go directly to the owner and operator of this property. It is an absolute disgrace that they would allow a property like this be vandalized to this capacity and do nothing absolutely nothing in the shadow of the intrepid. What are we waiting for the intrepid to get tagged? What are we waiting for a group of graffiti vandals late at night to board the intrepid, which they have the capability of doing, and start tagging up this monument to America's might, to America's patriotism, and to the sacrifices that were made? That's coming. That is a potentiality unless we draw the line in the sand. We have the resources. We have the police who are trained, who can specifically track down these graffiti vandals. The penalties are in place. If you're a predicate offender, incarceration or high fines. If you're a one-time offender, community service. And we must think that if vandalism is not dealt with to this degree, it is the broken windows theory. So while this building remains vandalized, and nobody does anything to stop this. Others, mostly young men, will see that nobody cares. And then they will procure their own aerosol paint. And they will start bombing other properties. You can see it all up and down the West Side Highway. You can see it all throughout the cities. 
because they know there are absolutely no consequences. So either we go back to considering this a serious crime and violation, or we'll continue to have our quality of life be spoiled by these dozens and dozens of vandals. And let me give credit to a guy I often didn't disagree way back in 1989. Some of you I don't even think were in reporting then. You might not have even been birthed. He's a very odd, strange-looking young man who had been and helped the subway systems, mass transit systems in Chicago, Philadelphia, Toronto, and Washington, D.C. He was the president of the New York City Transit Authority, David Gunn. He would carry a backpack. He would not wear a suit and tie. It was at a period of time in which our entire subway system was vandalized. The moving cars, the subway system, all the layups where the trains would be kept at night, the tunnels, it was scarred with graffiti. There were dozens and dozens of graffiti crews who each and every night would descend into the system and vandalize and destroy equipment. David Kahn came up with a common sense idea. He goes, the moment that graffiti is put up on a subway car, we take it out of service. We bring it to the yards, we scrub it clean. We deny the graffiti vandals, the knockers, the joy they get in looking at their piece over and over again. What other people don't understand who don't have street smarts is what there are too many graffiti vandals. And right now, we have more of a supply than there is the demand to do graffiti. They begin crossing out each other's graffiti. And that is considered a diss and dismiss. And we're not talking little choir boys here. We're talking young men who carry weapons also and have battles with other graffiti crews. And when you cross off their graffiti, they consider that an act of aggression, an act of war. And that oftentimes can lead to unnecessary violence in the streets. So when I'm mayor of the city of New York, graffiti is the number one issue. If you don't defeat the graffiti menace, it will just expand like a fungus. First, in the urban areas. Secondly, out in residential communities and then into the parks, the statues, the religious shrines, everywhere. It used to be that the graffiti vandal would say, this is an opportune location to put up my art. But I'm not going to do it on a church. I'm not going to do it on a statue. I'm not going to do it in a park. The rules no longer exist. The civility no longer exists. They need to be arrested. They need to be prosecuted. They need to be identified, and just like in the case of Jonathan Avelson at 19, they need to be made infamous for the actions that they are taking against our community. So that will be a priority from day one. I, as mayor, go out there with brush in hand, power sprays, all the equipment that you scrape the graffiti with, and with a crew that's dedicated to me every day hitting at, we, at least one location, removal of the graffiti, cite the owner and operators, give them the bill, and then have a rapid response team make sure that it stays clean, that it's not bombed again. The borough presidents who do little if nothing but cut ribbons, appoint community board members, and figure out budgets for capital improvement, they should be overseeing these rapidly uh, response team, rapid response teams that go out, cite the graffiti, and immediately teams are descended into the area. Whether they're from parks, Department of Transportation, Department of Sanitation, they must immediately attack that graffiti, remove it in the tradition of David Gunn. How is it he was able to do it in 1989 successfully, and we seem to be paralyzed by the graffiti vandals who hold us hostage? And again, Day one, this edifice, which is a functioning business behind what looks like an abandoned building, must be held accountable for having had this desecration continue right in the shadow of the intrepid aircraft carrier. Any questions?
So it's the responsibility of the city to do the removal. You give them 30 days notice. If they are the owner and operators of the properties, it's their responsibility to remove it. So Eric Adams is going to give them a pass. They might as well, he might as well be allowing the graffiti vandals to have a canvas on every commercial and business location in the city. What's his remedy? He doesn't want enforcement. He doesn't want to arrest. He doesn't want prosecution of the graffiti vandals. He doesn't want the owner operators of the property to be held culpable. He doesn't want the small mom and pop businessmen and businesswomen not to take responsibility for removal of graffiti. Who does he think is going to do it? Uh, how about just finding those uh, juvenile vandals who should be prosecuted and giving them community service where they're doing the heavy lifting? Why not the people who are doing the graffiti once they're caught being forced to do the community service? This way, other graffiti vandals see them and recognize there are consequences for your actions. Look. That, I'm not dismissing that as an alternative, but is that happening in the borough of Brooklyn? He's still the Brooklyn borough president. It's littered with graffiti. Go to Brooklyn. Garbage in the streets. Nothing's being cleaned up. So he's going to implement that, pay some young, young uh, adults some money in order to remove the graffiti. I'm saying the mayor has to make it a priority. If the mayor is actually physically removing graffiti at a location each day, It'll, he will become a role model. Letting anyone off the hook. Your property, you got to keep it clean too. Curtis, this morning also on a different topic, on the Gifted and Talented program, um, Eric Adams was on CNN and he said for the first time that this program necessarily isn't going to be different under his administration or your administration. He said whoever is the next mayor. And the Times was calling that a clear rebuke of Mayor de Blasio and the changes he's trying to make in Gifted and Talented. Well, I see always Eric Adam, he vacillates. It's sort of like from day to day, he sort of moves in the direction of what makes sense. I don't mind him joining me because I said that early on. What has not been discussed and Eric Adams must address is the envy, the jealousy that has resulted from this now that it's been resurrected by his friend, Bill de Blasio, his supporter, his mentor who said, I'll sit down with Eric and I'll try to show him the light of day on this. This will lead to more attacks, more harassment, more abuse of Asians, as we saw the first time around, the specialized tests, gifted and talented. I went through this in the 60s. I'm a Gentile. Gentiles used to complain that Jewish children were doing so much better than the Gentiles. And maybe we needed to cap them. We needed to eliminate the honest programs because they were dominating. They tried that in the 60s. That's foolish. You must reward achievement. That's what our country is about. To those who aren't achieving, like my two youngest sons, who did not qualify for gifted and talented, obviously the limited number of slots they didn't qualify for, somebody else qualified. Just create more gifted and talented. Example, in a city area, maybe only three or four of the children at that elementary school in the kindergarten group actually qualify for gifted and talented, then have a class for them. Don't eliminate the program, which has been done in the past. Curtis, Curtis I want to ask you a bit about health care. You know, COVID-19 exposed a lot of the disparity of higher COVID-19 positivity rates and lower income neighborhoods. Uh, as mayor, what's your approach to ensuring that if this is another pandemic, we don't have the same kind of disparity to reach the next Well, it's clear that for years, if you go into the inner city, by the way, where I spend all my time, Unlike uh, my opponent, Eric Adams, who uh, now often is in the Hamptons, Martha's Vineyard, and Monaco. Gee, who the hell goes to Monaco? But the wealthy, the elite, the uber-rich. But in the poor and impoverished communities, uh, the communities of color, the immigrant uh, communities, there is not the quality of health care there should be. What I also am going to talk about that no elected official has talked about is the epidemic that is taking place to every family, rich, middle class, poor, 
It happened in my family, to my father and mother, luckily, who survived into their 90s, dementia, and Alzheimer's. Have you heard that brought up in the primaries? No. Have you heard that brought up in the general election? No. Have you heard City Hall bring it up, or even the Department of Health, or the agencies responsible? It is the silent problem that is growing in scope. It is affecting the poor and impoverished, the middle class, and the wealthy. And that will be a priority when I'm mayor, because it's personal to me. I have seen people put away in the wards of the senior citizen long-term care facilities who wallow in their beds as they are wheeled out each day, wheeled back in, and they are barely able to control their mental and physical faculties. And all we do is keep them out of sight, out of mind. That is also a huge growing problem that none of us discuss, and that will be dealt with. So in the inner city, then, what specifically would you do to make sure that there are more health care opportunities? Well, you have to do home visits. You have to go old school. Remember, I grew up in an era, which is almost non-existent now, where doctors or nurses would visit you in your homes, in your domiciles, particularly senior citizens who, in many instances, cannot travel out. It's a danger for them to travel. So we call it the visiting nurse services, and they do an outstanding job. There needs to be more of that. And how about a visiting doctor service that can compete with that? Because oftentimes the doctors will tell you, you either come to my clinic, you come to the hospital where I'm affiliated, but I'm not doing house calls. We need to get back to doing house calls, especially in the immigrant community where they don't necessarily know how to facilitate the services in a municipal hospital or in a municipal clinic. And then you mentioned dementia. Like, how do you connect, how does the city reach families that are struggling with that? I just wait for that truck to pass. The problem we have, and everyone in the uh, United States has, is that we don't discuss dementia and Alzheimer's. It's almost like it's verboten. We don't expose it. We don't show it. It's almost like we need a Geraldo Rivera expose to show how many thousands of people in our municipal hospital system, in our state hospital system, private hospital systems, long-term uh, care units for seniors are languishing, and increasingly younger and younger patients are being diagnosed with dementia and Alzheimer's. It's almost never being discussed, and I recognize that we have to discuss it often. Again, the mayor has the power to walk into any of these long-term senior citizen facilities and walk into an Alzheimer's and dementia ward, as I have for my aunts and uncles, and you will be almost as shocked and horrified as we were when Geraldo Rivera went over the fence in Willowbrook and exposed us as to how the state was treating those young adults who were intellectually disabled. We were all shocked. We were horrified. And we did something about it. You don't hear any discussion about Alzheimer's and dementia. And let's face it, all the money in the world cannot keep you from becoming a victim of dementia and Alzheimer's. Right. These retirees were promised that they could have a doctor of their choice. They would have not be forced to go into a system and be told what doctors were available. Why would we be breaking that promise? Now, the whole concept of the de Blasio administration is we would save on the health care side. But I think we have a moral commitment. It was part of an agreement we made with those labor unions, with their retirees, many of whom have served ably, heroically, and honorably for the city of New York. They should have the doctor of their choice. They should have a health care plan which provides them with choice, not something that forces them to take one doctor, use one place, and discard where they've been getting their care of late.
It's not me, uh, everybody. Who has ever seen any of these edifices that have been stained, that have been vandalized for months and years, especially those in the aftermath of the demonstrations, the riots, the looting? You just go to Soho. It just hits you right in the face. So you come in through the Holland Tunnel. Dense. No removal of that graffiti whatsoever. And then, even in active environments of business, where some businesses have recycled themselves, they're back in business, the graffiti remains. The city's not removing it. The owner-operators aren't removing it. And all it does is it induces other, through zero tolerance, through broken windows theory, to graffiti also. My plan has been used before very effectively during the Giuliani and Bloomberg years. We didn't have these kind of problems. What Eric Adams is uh, suggesting is that people not be held culpable if it's on their property. It'll never be dealt with. The city alone cannot deal with it. The lootings and the robberies and the shoplifting that we see have unfortunately increased, not just because of homeless or emotionally disturbed or people living out in the streets who need to feed habits, alcohol addictions or drug addictions that they have, but also because schools are back into effect. People, young adults are back in the schools oftentimes when the last bell rings Many of the young people get together with their backpacks and they're like locusts to a cornfield. They go into a nearby business. That's why if you notice, a lot of owner and operators, the moment school lets out for a full hour, they lock their doors. It's almost like they, they go on a sabbatical or break because what happens is many of those young children together end up going in and looting and the store refuses to do anything. They don't want to take a risk, I understand that. The insurance companies tell them, just sacrifice the product. The police don't respond, they don't make arrests, the DAs don't prosecute, and the mayor has basically given whoever it is that is coming in and either looting or is stealing property a license to steal. In New York City now, no matter who you are, you have a license to steal as a looter or a shoplifter, and that will end when I'm mayor. Thank you. Any other questions?